It is an American epidemic. About 70 million adults and a third of our children are overweight or obese. And there are some long-term ramifications. 20% of all cancers are related to being overweight, lack of exercise, poor diet. A new study shows that people who are overweight at 20 years old have a 60 to 80 percent increased risk of developing esophageal and stomach cancers. Now, here to discuss all this is Dr. Scott Ackerman with Ackerman Cancer Center. Good morning to you. Thank Good you morning. for being here. You know, we've, we've, we've often talked about the dangers of being a couch potato, but this is now, this study is real evidence that points to the fact that if you continue to live that kind of lifestyle, you're end, you could very likely end up with cancer or, or something really, something else very severe as well when it comes to diabetes. Right. Not only if you continue to live that lifestyle, you can you get, uh, can end up with cancer, you wind up having nearly three times the risk of developing these cancers. So it's interesting because we talked about if you're overweight at the age of 20, but there's also information in the study that suggests that even gaining weight over time, which tends to be a problem for a lot of Americans, can also increase your risk of getting cancer. Right. So what the study looked at, they looked at uh, the National Cancer Institute study, which is a very reputable uh, body. They looked at 400,000 people. That's a lot of people to look at, and so you get some real good data. And they looked at the weights of these people at age 20, and then looked at their weights at age 50, between the ages of 50 and 70, and found out that those that were overweight at age 20 had a 60 to 80 percent increased risk of developing uh, these esophageal cancers or, or stomach cancers. But those people that gained weight over, over time during their lifetime, and they gave, if they gained 35 to 45 pounds over the lifetime, had three times the risk of these cancers. It's interesting because we specifically noted esophageal and stomach cancer. Is there something about those kinds of cancers that are directly a direct correlation to perhaps what we're eating? Well, primarily these are the ones that, that uh, were looked at. In fact, earlier this morning I was reading another study that showed that obesity is linked to an increased risk of liver cancer. So we think that there's increased risk of, of all sorts of cancers with obesity. We've talked about breast cancer and things like that in the past. But this specifically looked at stomach and esophageal because of certain hormonal things associated with that and, and, and with obesity we have all sorts of imbalance in hormones with insulin and our testosterone levels and our estrogen levels and there's been some correlation with these there's some thoughts about the correlation between these hormone levels in our body and perhaps the risk of developing these kinds of cancers. All right, so let's talk about remedies here, recommendations. Obviously you need to stay fit, you need to stay healthy. Right, so you want to make sure that you not only uh, stay healthy when you're a young adult, but you continue to maintain that healthy body weight during, during your lifetime. Because again, the gaining of weight during the lifetime is worse than just being obese to begin with. So you want to maintain a good body weight. What we look at is what's called the body mass index, BMI, and we, when we recommend and a BMI, you could go on the, on the internet and you could Google it and you plug in your height and your weight and you get your BMI. We want it to be between 18.5 and 24.5. That's a good, that's a normal body mass index, BMI, body mass index. Just your weight and your height and you plug it into the formula. And to do that, exercise th uh, five times a week for a half hour a day. That would be about two and a half hours of exercise a week. Make sure you eat whole grains and, and, and foods like that. Try to minimize excessive intake of processed meats um, and, um, and not too much alcohol or caffeine. I think what's also important here is, is that people tend to think if they maybe didn't grow up having a regular exercise routine is this doesn't have to be 30 minutes of you're out of breath and you feel like you can hardly walk after your workout. I mean, this can be just getting up at the office and, and walking up the stairs or, or taking a walk outside. It doesn't have to be something that, that feels like you dread it every single day. Right, not, ex not you know, exhaustive exercise, but walk around the block. When you come home after work, it's, it's beautiful weather now. Yeah. Walk around the block. It's going to be getting. It's going to be staying light later on at night. So take a walk. Uh, take maybe a little jog or whatever. Take Thank the you. stairs at work. Yeah, <laughs> that's. I, I know that's. I, such an important. I tell my husband that all the time too. I'm like, got to get some more exercise, and he's really good about doing it. Thank you, Doc, for being here. Thank you. Appreciate it. If you know someone who can benefit from the information in this interview, we're going to post it on newsforjacks.com on the morning show page on our website. You'll also be able to share it then later this morning, particularly because we'll post it on Facebook as well.